Hello, my name is Tom DuPont. I'm with Codesmith Tools, and today I'm going to be going over XML properties. An XML property is a special property in a Codesmith template that is designed to work with XML files. When declaring the property, you specify an XML schema in the form of an XSD, and then when a file is selected for that property, Codesmith will open the file, parse it, do all the hard work, and return to you a strongly typed object set for you to work with in your template. This makes working with XML very easy because you can define your schema, develop your templates with simple objects from your schema, and then your templates will automatically error check any XML documents passed into them only using the valid ones. So this is just another feature that Codesmith provides to making template development easier and generation more reliable. So the first thing we're going to do in this video is go ahead and look at the example XML templates that come with Codesmith and see how they do things. And then in the end of the video we're actually going to go ahead and make our own very simple little project. So if you have Codesmith installed, you should have a, code, a folder in your My Documents folder with Codesmith, Samples, Templates, Examples, XML, and then in this case we're going to do C Sharp. But also you can always get the latest version of our templates from codesmith.googlecode.com. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Just going to export. And as I said, it's codesmith.googlecode.com. And then you have to go into svn slash trunk and then the directory just described a moment ago. Okay, so now that we have those, we're going to go into Codesmith Studio. And I have already created a folder shortcut here to that folder. And sure enough, everything we just downloaded from Google Code is already in there. So this contains two examples, a very simple purchase order example, and a map of the Northwind database along with templates that will generate business entities from it. So let's start, of course, by looking at the more simple of the two. So I just opened up the sample purchase order XML. And as you can see, it's a standard XML document. It's pretty simple. It's just got... Uh, it's a purchase order node that has ship to with some sub nodes and items that have been ordered, totals, etc. So nothing complicated. Now I want to open up the XSD and just talk about this very briefly. Now this is not Codesmith proprietary or anything like that. This is uh, very common. This is well, it has a lot of tutorials on the internet on how to do this. So I just want to briefly show that these two line up. So if we look, we're starting at the root with a purchase order, and then we have. Uh, elements here with order date, subtotal, uh, ship cost, total cost. We've got the complex type of the ship too that's going to have city state zip. So this is indeed the schema for this XML document. That's all we really want to show. So if we open up the purchase order CST, we'll see that all we have to do up here is declare an XML property as opposed to a regular property like we are used to. We're going to give it a name, like always. We're going to specify the schema right here, which in this case we're going to pick the purchase order XSD file. And then, like any other property, you can give it a default. In this case, we're going to give it the sample purchase order as default. So you'll notice it's already populated down here. So we're looking down here. If you click this, it'll ask you to open up a specific file. Now, if you pick something that doesn't match its schema, it will throw an error. It'll tell you. And if we pick something that does match, it'll succeed. So notice how simple this is. We've declared it as named my purchase order. And down here, that's literally all we're doing. We're just doing my purchase order, which as you can see here is a strongly typed object, dot ship to, and again, that's created another object for us, dot name, which is a string. It even has lists here with items, and we're going to traverse that list and print out all the items. So pretty much we're just redoing the output in a different manner, but we've read it all from the XML and now it's in these objects. And all we had to do to do that was create an XML property. So if we run this, you'll see that, again let's go to vertical tabs here, you'll see that it read in all this from the XML and spit it out and everything is accurate. Two items, correct totals, etc. So now we're going to look at the north wind example. And this is going to be a bit more complicated because not only is it bigger, but also it's using master templates and sub templates, as well as using the XSD in a slightly different manner. So let's start by looking at our entity master. Now this is a fairly simple master template, but for more information on master templates and sub templates, please watch our video on that subject. So I just want to point out that we have our XML property up here and we are registering our sub-template, entity.csd. Now we get a little fancy here by adding an output directory property in code as opposed to adding it in 
the standard CodeSmith declarations here, but as you can see, it's going to render the same effect on a property called output directory. And down here, when we override the render method, we are just doing all our directory work and then for eaching through each entity in the entity map. Now again, these are strongly typed objects. So we're going to look at the XML that uh, got those in a second. But it's as simple after that as creating a new entity template, setting our properties in it accordingly. And this is actually using a preserve regions merge strategy. Again, for more information on that, please watch our merge strategy video. And doing a rendered file. So several operations happening here, but all pretty simple. So let's move on to looking at our entity templates. So first thing that's important to note is that we're still declaring our entity map here with an XML property, even though earlier in the master template we passed in the actual object we wanted to use. This is because these objects are dynamically generated and we need to reference them in each template in order to actually have access to them. Now notice though that here we have a property for entity name, but no entity, which is what we set in the last template. That is actually being declared down here. We have a public property for an entity, and that is what got set earlier. Notice that we are overriding the pre-render on this template so that if you pass in an entity name, it's going to go look through the entity map and set it. Otherwise, uh, you're expected to have set the entity beforehand, or it's going to throw an exception. So that's kind of neat. It allows us to either use a master template to pass in the entity, or to take in a string and still find that entity. It makes this template a little more uh, dynamic. And here I'm not really going to go into any details, uh, just very briefly point out that again this is uh, creating business entities, so we're going to make namespaces, classes, and then for each property and then we're going to make private variables and accessors and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So again, very simple output here. Now I've been talking about entities here, let's go take a quick look at the XML and the XSD just to see where we got all that. So as you can see here, this is a simple outline of the Northwind database. We have an entity map with a series of entities in them that have properties and relationships. And if we look through this, it is the Northwind database. It is pretty straightforward. Territories that have relationships to regions and employees that have properties of first names, last names, addresses, etc. So a lot of data here, but fairly simple. So now let's briefly look at the XSD. I want to point out here that unlike the um, sample purchase order where everything was nested, this is actually using named complex types. So here we're declaring our initial element of the entity map, and then we have a sequence of entities which are coming from the type entity. So here we, when we declare a complex type, we name it entity, and then this doesn't have to be uh, completely nested and going in, this can be a little bit easier to read. But again, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. Uh, it's well documented on the internet how to do or how to create an XSD. So for more details, feel free to look that up. So with all that in place, we can look at our Entity Master project, which is just referencing our Entity Master CST. If we run that, generate outputs, this folder just got refreshed with um, all the generated files. And if we look inside, employee has all the things we're just looking at, first name, last name, again, a simple business entity object. So you may have noticed there's one last template in here we haven't looked at, and that is the generate entity map. And this is just really cool. It's going to take in a target database and then generate the entity map for it. So in this case, it's generating the Northwind database by default. Well, no, it's not. I'm sorry. We would be expected to specify the Northwind database, or at least something that matches its schema. But it's a simple template. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to go into it too much in this video here. I just wanted to mention it because it's a uh, great idea. So that's a brief summary of all the XML property templates that come with CodeSmith. But because I don't only want to use existing ones, I want to take a little bit of time to create our own set really quick. So, new stuff. First thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and create an XML file for us. I'll call this list.xml. I'm just going to bring in, I happen to have a list of lists, a uh, couple lists of best of items for bikes and superheroes. Now to emphasize how convenient the XML properties are when you specify a schema, the first thing I want to do is create a template that does not use a schema. So we're going to call this no schema. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up real quick. Now the first thing we want to do is bring in our XML property. So notice that I've declared an XML property that has no schema attribute. So if we build this real quick, you'll notice that it still takes in a file. It's working like an XML property, but no schema has been specified. And that's going to affect the way this actually runs. You're going to have to use best of list as an actual XML document. So you have to go through the nodes and traverse everything. Now I've taken the liberty of going ahead and writing um, a little method that I'm just going to put in the script block down here. And this is going to just recursively go through each node, print out all of its attributes, and then go through its um, child node. So if we bring in this line right here, notice that we're just going to start by calling the method run child node with the first child of the best of list, and I'm keeping a count so I know how far to indent, and we're starting at zero. So this should be pretty simple if we hit play here. Oh, got to specify the file. We play. Our output just comes out to very similar to what we had in the list. It's just going to recursively go through each node and print out each property in it. So, fairly simple, but I want to emphasize here that, um, again, it takes a lot of programming. You have to go through each node. In this case, I'm doing a recursive algorithm. Uh, it's just not as graceful as using strongly typed objects. So, now that we've looked at that, let's go ahead and create a template that's going to handle strongly typed objects. So the first thing we have to do is create our schema. So we're going to do a new file. We're going to call it list.xsd. When we go ahead and open that up, I'm going to copy in a schema I have written for this. Again, without going into too much details, it's pretty simple. Uh, it starts with a root element of a best of list map, which is of type best of list map. And that type has a sequence of best of lists in it. And best of list has a sequence of best of items. Also, it has a name. And then each of those best of items has a name and a description. So fairly simple. Now I'm going to do this with a master template and a sub template. So let's call this master.cst. Let's also create a sub.cst. And my master template is going to be really simple, so I'm actually going to go ahead and just copy and paste the whole thing in because it's so short. So we register our best of list map as an XML property, give it list.xsd as a schema, and then we register our sub template, which is sub.cst here, and override our render method. Inside, all we're going to do is just for each through uh, best of list map dot best of lists, and for each one, we're going to create a sub template, set its current list and map and then render it to file. And notice we're going to do output slash the uh, best of list name dot text. So now if we go create our sub.cst, once again this is so short and simple I'm just going to copy and paste it in. You'll notice that once again we have the XML property which we set earlier in the master and we have a property of our current list which we set in the master. But notice the type name here. The namespace is going to be underscore codesmith dot and then the name of the generated object. So in this case, we were creating a best of list type. So then the output is just list, and then the list same, and then a for loop going through each item in the best of list item, and displaying its rank in a linear order with its name and description. So more simple stuff, and if we go back to the master, and we actually run it, oh, once again, I forgot the uh, XML file. We have to specify list.xml. And now if we run that, nothing will render in the master, but if we look, this refreshed with a new output folder, and both of our lists are here now. We have bikes in the correct output, and superheroes. And we know that's the correct output because Batman is number one. So there you go. That was several examples of how to use our XML properties and Codesmith templates. Um, Again, it's as simple as declaring an XML property, specifying a schema, which is done in XSD, and then Codesmith will do all the work for you to generate a strongly typed object set with everything out of your schema, which is a lot easier, or at least in my opinion, than dealing with having no schema.
So I believe that concludes this video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for future videos, please visit us at community.codesmithtools.com. My name is Tom DuPont, and thank you very much for using Codesmith.